Hi, I'm Allie. Join me in creating this crossing halos bracelet, which you could also do as a necklace or even do as a simple pair of earrings. Remember, if you do need any supplies for this oh so simple bracelet, you can look below the video in the descriptions. We have links there to the exact number of materials that you need, the size, shape, and color options as well. Gather up your materials and let's get started. So to create our crossing halos bracelet, we are going to begin with some two hold halos as well as faceted round trios. The faceted round trios have three holes in them, but we are only going to be using the exterior. So hole number one and hole number three. I have a size 10 beading needle on here with some size six white dragon thread that I'm gonna be working with. I have about four feet of thread and a stop bead at the end of the thread with just a little bit left to tie on a knot to. I'm also working with eight OC beads as well as 11 OC beads and just a simple cup button in aluminum. We're gonna begin with our C beads and I'm going to start with just one, two, and three of my 11 OC beads and then I'm gonna pick up my first halo bead. I'm gonna sew through the halo bead through hole number one. Remember, I'm using a two hole halo. I'm also gonna make sure I'm grabbing the exterior, one of the exterior holes of the round trio, and then sliding through the secondary side of the next halo bead. In the interior here, I want you to add one, two of your 11s, followed by one of your eight millimeter, followed by one and two 11s. We're gonna repeat that then the whole way along the bracelet. Chances are, if you have about a seven, seven and a quarter inch wrist, you are going to need about 10 of these halo beads to go on to your project. So after you get the next ones on, same deal here, two of your 11s, one of your eight and two 11 beads, and then on to the next halo bead. Go ahead and load up about nine or 10 of those, depending on your wrist size. You can check it as you're making it, make sure it's big enough. And then I'll show you how we're gonna go on and do the crisscrossing to get our cross in the middle of the design. Once you get to the end of the design, and I have nine halos on here, my sample piece has 10. I'm going to add after that last halo, a series of two of my 11 O's, followed by an eight O, followed by five 11s, and then my cup button. In the interior of my cup button, I'm going to put three 11 OC beads and then go down through the secondary hole of that cup button. Once we're down through that secondary hole of the cup button, we are going to add one, two, three, four, and five of our 11 O's. And after those five 11 O's, we are going to share that eight OC bead, taking our thread and needle back through that same one that we just added. Now this is just only one piece of thread through the clasp or closure. Anytime I go through a clasp or closure, I like to have multiple pieces of thread. As we come back down through the design and add the exterior, you'll get a chance to increase that thread pass or add to that option. So that way you have more than one piece of thread through. After exiting through the 8 OC bead, go ahead and grab two 11 OC beads, and then we're gonna start catching on to the third hole of our round trios and the second hole of our halos that wrap around them. Coming out through the end there, you can see that first crossing action. We are going to repeat this along the design, adding two of our 11s, going through and sharing the 8 OC bead that's already there. Once again, adding two more 11s, and then going in to the end here and sewing through that last of the round trio and going over then towards the end and coming out the halo. What that's doing is that's creating that initial cross design in between the halos as we add along with the C beads. This is also a design that you can stop at this point if you want to, if you don't want the encased look and that continued crossing effect. After you do the initial crossing, you can see how it looks again, nice and simple and easy as well. This would also be great for a choker as well as a wrap bracelet if you wanted to switch up the design just a little bit and make it a little bit longer. If you also want more of an Xing effect, remember you can add extra C beads in between and that'll just change the count slightly when you go in to do the wrapping around the halos. As you get to the end and you're exiting through the last halo bead, go ahead and repeat what we did on the other side, adding two 11 OC beads, followed by one 8 
followed by 28 of your 11 OC beads. You're then going to take your thread and needle and go back through that one 8 OC bead, forming a loop. From here, we're going to go back through, and I don't know why I added three at the beginning, sorry, just two. Ignore that one closest to the bead stop. You're going to go back through those two 11 OC beads that are right there on the end prior to the halo. And see how that end then mimics the crossing design as well as your clasp section. From here then, we're set up to go along the exterior of the design, and it's very, very simple, adding in some more 11s and some 8Os to cage around the exterior of the halo bead. Coming out of the seed beads here, at the end, I'm going to add one, two, and three of my 11 O's, followed by one 8 followed by one, two, and three more 11 O's, and then I'm going to stay to one side. So I'm going to stay just down the right side here, going through the two 11s, 8 2 11s, and then out. So you're going to go the whole way along the project, not sewing through the halos at all, and just using this as an opportunity for the exterior wrap. Once again, three 11s, one 8, followed by three 11s, skip over the halo bead, go to the next side, to the right side hole, through the 11s, through the 8, through the next two 11s, and then continue down the design with the same thing, adding in those seven extra beads along the right side. We're doing the right side here. We're gonna come down and reinforce our button, and then we're gonna come up the left side as well for a nice, very simple and easy halo design. Sometimes I think simplest is the best when it comes to this design element. Make sure to comment below also if you change up and do more spacing between. That helps other viewers that are part of the Potomac family that may want to change it up a little bit. When you get to the bottom of the design here and down towards the cut button, what you're going to do is you are going to take your thread and go through all those seed beads leading up to the cut button through the button, when you come out the top of the button, if you can catch on to some of those seed beads right away, it's always easier to do the first one, especially as your thread's coming through, because the needle has to bend there. Go down then through the other side and out the base of the design. Remember I said I always like to get at least two strands of thread through the clasp just to reinforce it since that's the area of the most tension. You're gonna come down then through that shared 8 -0 over to the left side now. And if you're more comfortable sewing on the right, just simply flip the project. And now we're gonna sew down through this side here, adding that same design on the exterior. As you finish up the design, you can see that when you come down to the end, this is your opportunity to reinforce the loop as well. So I'm bringing my thread and needle out through that 8 and I'm also sewing through those C beads. Remember, you can always add another clasp, do a wire guard and a pretty clasp guard and a Potomax clasp, as well as the option, if you want to here, to do a peyote style on the loop as well. Coming down then through that 8 you're going to bring your thread and needle back to that starting spot. So I'm going to bring it back to that thread right here so I can tie my two threads together going through then here, pulling that stopper off as well as that extra little bead here, getting those needles and thread right next to one another, right before the 8 which is great because I'm using that white thread in the silver beads and it'll really hide it, hide it, doing a nice knot as I have that design. And then also after that knot, if you want to, you can take your thread and needle back through the design and separate the thread out a little bit or grab your burner or your cutter and cut off those extra thread ends for this nice and simple crossing halo design, which you can see is an easy, easy way to really decorate up the halos. And I think the faceted round trios are fabulous in there. The advantage that you have with the two hole trio and the faceted round trio is that you do have those two holes to grab onto and your seed beads will stay along the side and won't flip to the top or the bottom of the halo. 
Thanks so much for joining me and learning a little bit during this Crossing Halos video. Remember, if you do need any of the materials for the design, go ahead and look below the video in the description to shop with us online. If you haven't yet already, go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel so you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Bees. As always, thanks so much for joining and stay tuned for our next inspirational video.